Now, Nathan posed this question on the WP Test Facebook group. Do you think Elemental has a promising outlook for the future? And this got me thinking, is Elemental too big to fail? Well, let's take a look at a couple of things. Before I do go any further, though, this video is not about me bashing on Elemental. I'm going to go through some of the points that people have raised, give my opinion on some of these, and give my overall opinion on the kind of landscape right now. But this isn't the only question I'm going to take a look at, because there is, in various different places, a little bit of unrest about Elemental, its future, and how things are being addressed right now. But as always, this is a two-way conversation. I'll give you my points, my thoughts, but I want yours as well in the comments section below. So be sure to leave any comments, feedback, or questions on what you think about Elemental, its future, and if it's too big to fail right now. Now, one thing surprised me, and this could be one of those things where it's a bit of an echo chamber, but I would like to think that the WP Touch Facebook group is kind of balanced with lots of people that use Elemental and other tools. So there's kind of a balance across there. But what really surprised me was the overwhelming negative sentiment. In other words, pretty much the majority of people came back with the answer of no. They don't think it has a bright future. Yes, there was a, a percentage of people that thought they did, which did really surprise me. But why do people feel like that? Well, this is where I think we need to take a little, little bit of a look back to prior to version 3 being released. Now, I've talked about this many, many times in various different live streams, so I'm not going to go over this in too much detail. But basically, I personally feel that up until the release of version 3, Elementor was very, very innovative. They were the first page builder, if not the first, one of the first, to bring to the masses the ability to customize themes, to create your own kind of total layers, headers, footers, all the internals, to be able to work with WooCommerce and start customizing that, to have integration with dynamic content like advanced custom fields, Jet Engine, and those kinds of tools. So there's a lot of innovation going on in Elementor during that period. However, when version 3 was released with a lot of problems and what that brought with it and the amount of frustration and negative sentiment that came about at that time, I think that really hasn't helped. Put on top of that, the fact that pricing changes with the amount of installations were allowed was kind of changed with no community feedback or no user feedback, along with various other things that have happened over the last year or so with some botched releases with rollbacks, with forced updates and things like that, and the security issues that came about. All of this is available on the Facebook group, and you can probably find plenty of information about it out there. But I think all of these things have negatively impacted Elementor. So let's talk about, is it too big to fail? Well, my personal opinion is we need to quickly take a look at where a lot of the figures for Elemental come from. For example, we have to consider the fact that they're talking about, is it something like 14 million installations right now? I'd love to know what the breakdown of free versus pro installs, because I wouldn't imagine if we said 10 to 20% of pro as in paid for, then that gives you an indication, still massive figures, but still where the X number of million are being kind of touted around. We have to consider Lots of people are going to use it because the, the free version has a lot of features involved in it, so you can create full sites with it. It works very, very well across the board with other different themes and many plugins and so on. So there's lots of reasons why the free version is so popular. Plus the fact if you take a look at places like Invato Elements and lots of themes, when they change the licensing to be able to include Elementor as part of a theme, then all those things help spread the user base. And if we take a look back several years ago, where Visual Composer was the number one page builder in WordPress. A big part of that was due to the fact that places like Invato Elements were so popular, and that was included in so many themes as the page builder included, alongside tools like Slider Revolution or Revolution Slider, whichever way you want to look at it. So we have to consider those things, plus the fact that I do think that with the aggressive marketing that we've seen up until recently from Elementor on places like Facebook, on YouTube, those kinds of places, Elementor, the name now, has become sort of synonymous with building websites in the same way that if you're outside the WordPress space, you probably think of Squarespace and Wix and those kinds of things because of their heavy advertising. This is very similar to the way that we don't consider, you know, image manipulation and searching on the internet. Now we talk about Photoshopping it and we talk about Google it. These are just terms that we've kind of taken on board into our natural vocabulary. And I think Elemental has kind of made inroads into that, which means that it is the first thought for a lot of people when they think of WordPress and a page builder to design the sites. All these things help 
make Elementor a much bigger platform. However, we do have to consider the fact that when you take a look at what market sector they're actually targeting, there's a very confused message there. With the pricing structure, when you consider that the, the sort of the top plan now is $999 for a thousand sites, whereas a couple of years ago, that was $200 for a thousand sites, plus the fact renewal discounts have kind of been gotten rid of and those kinds of things. We've got the cloud platform that just kind of rolled out recently. You do have to question what exactly is the target market for Elementor? If you consider it being DIYers and people that have one website, they do it for themselves, or maybe a small business freelancer or agency that rapidly want to push out sites, tool like Elementor is a really good option. Most people in that sector probably don't care about things like CSS Grid, Flexbox, the Loop Builder, Conditional Logic, those kind of things, because most of their clients probably don't care. They have no need for it, and they can augment those missing spaces with tools like Jet Engine and those kinds of things. There's plenty of tools out there. So there's a lot of things you can kind of see why Elementor is so popular in that market. But then the pricing, when you consider if you are a freelancer or an agency and you may have hundreds, maybe even thousands of clients, that pricing structure is kind of strange because you really are targeting those people, whereas your feature set is more kind of lower level, if that makes sense. Yes, there are definitely some nice features and we know that the container element is coming out at some point. But this leads me on to my, my next point is, one of the problems we have with Elementor is you have this amazing third party ecosystem, which for all intents and purposes is incredibly useful in the same way that the Word Re WordPress repository is incredibly useful but it's also the Achilles heel of Elementor. If you consider the fact that Elementor can't push updates out and new features because they have to check in with so many third-party plugin developers and theme developers that integrate Elementor into it, this leads to the inherent problem that when they want to bring out something that could technically be a game changer or a massive code change like the container element, that means that it's very problematic that everything is incredibly slow to be pushed out because there's such a massive reliance upon that ecosystem that surrounds Elementor, you can't push things out as quick. So the argument that if you take a look at Bricks Builder or Breakdance or lots of these other newer to the market builders, they are pushing out features incredibly rapidly. Some of those are massive change features. If you take a look at Bricks Builder, for example, they've had three changes in the way that you build a page. You start off in a very similar fashion to Elementor with sort of your sections and inner columns and those kinds of things. Then it moved on to what we currently have or what we had prior to 1.5, which was the sort of container element in the same way that we have in the alpha release of Elementor. And now they've kind of moved over to having sections, to have containers and to have divs, which are all basically the same thing, but they're different ways in which you structure things. Elementor realistically couldn't do that right now, even with the container element, as we've seen, if they make a major change to that, all those people that are using this alpha release are gonna have potential problems. Factor that into the whole link with so many other plugins and themes and things, there's an awful lot to have problems with. And this kind of leads me onto my kind of conclusion with this aspect of it. And this is just me rambling. So take this for what it's worth. And, and like I say, give me your feedback below. This is like a house of cards. As in Elementor in a large respect is kind of reliant upon that ecosystem. I think if there was not that ecosystem, I don't think Elementor would be as popular as it is now because there are gaping gaps in what Elementor can do that are being plugged by third party tools. But the problem as we've seen is when updates come out in either that tool or Elementor and they don't talk to each other, this is where sites fall down. And this is where the whole house of cards kind of comes into it. Is it a case that each of those is reliant upon each other and when things go wrong, everything can topple down. And if that is the case, which does appear to be in some respect in various different updates that have come out, you do have to question how long before your paying customer, forget about the freebies, forget about those people that are using the free version, probably more tolerant than people that are paying good money, especially if you're paying $1,000 for that sort of top plan. How long before those people that have clients start to lose enough money and enough faith in your product to stop using it?
That is going to happen at some point unless things change. So that's my thoughts on this aspect of it. I'll link to the thread that I'm talking about with people's comments. I'll also link to the thread over on the WP or the Web Squadron Facebook group, which is Imran's group, which is another thing that I want to come on to quickly. So I don't want to go on too much further, but like I say, I would love to get your feedback on what you think about what I've covered and your thoughts on this. So Mark Harris posted on the Web Squadron Facebook group today, a couple of hours ago. I'll just quickly read this out. You can probably see it anyway. So rather than create another thread about the issues that are well known exist, I'll pose another question. What are they not dealing with, with the issues and not giving straight answers to? Again, this is all about Elementor. So he's come back with a few options. They don't care. They'll do things their way at their pace and they're not accountable to their customers. They technically can't due to legacy code or lack of talented developers. Honestly, I don't think it's a lack of talented developers, but I do think there's a lot of legacy code issues there. They have other plans that are more important or financially they are committed to other projects and their investors and can't spare adequate resources for Elementor. Let's quickly talk about the investor side of things. When they raised their, I think it was like $14 million in venture capital a couple of years ago, you only have to look back to see that there was a seismic shift in the way Elemental moved forwards. For whatever reason, whether that's having to pay the dividends back to those venture capitalists for whatever kind of you know legal things they may have put in place, what obligations they had, we don't know and we probably never will know. But there was a shift in the way that Elemental was being developed and not for a positive kind of shift either. So I think there is some validity in that comment about being committed to those venture capitalists. Do I think with the other resources, I think this is a yes and no. I think the cloud platform is obviously their next step to move away from sole reliance upon the WordPress ecosystem with all the different plugins. They can have a level of control that they don't currently have where you just have a plugin that sits on Elemental and you can just install anything. This way they can control what plugins are working with it and they can have more control over making sure that those things work. I still think there's room for potential problems because there always will be because you're still built on top of WordPress. As I've said in live streams before, I think Brizzy had the better way of doing this where they removed WordPress from their offering and you just have the 95% of the Brizzy Builder experience without the hassle that you get with WordPress. They don't care. They'll do things their way at their pace and they're not accountable to their customers. I do think that Elementor, especially the top brass in Elementor, have a roadmap to exactly what they want to achieve. We do have to remember, though, that a lot of people that will focus on commenting on this are not necessarily your average user that just kind of gets on with things. You know, people like myself that do YouTube videos on it, people like Imran that talks about this and people that post in Facebook groups about it. We're probably the more vocal amongst the users and we're probably a very, very tiny percentage of the overall user base. However, we can't be ignored. This is one of those things that I think the management behind Elemental should really, really be listening to what's being said and really start to understand the negative sentiment that is growing. Whether we like it or not, it is growing inside the Elemental user community, whether they're paid for users or free users. So they have to go back to the, the technical uh, sort of problems with legacy code or lack of talented developers. I don't think, like I say, it's to do with lack of talent. I do think there's a lot of legacy code there, but I also think that take the legacy code out of it because that can be remedied relatively simply in compared to the massive amount of plugins that all create that reliance upon Elemental and Elemental have a reliance to work with those. I think this is the biggest problem. This is Elemental's Achilles heel. The ecosystem seems bright and shiny and for all intents and purposes, it is something we all want because we need those tools to fill out the gaps. However, Elemental is reliant upon those and making sure that the relationship with those tools stays positive because the end user is the one that suffers, as we've seen in many, many scenarios. So let me answer the question that I posed right at the top of this video. Do I think Elemental is too big to fail? The simple answer is no. If you take a look at something like Visual Composer several years ago, where that was the number one page builder, it looked like it was going to go on and become massive. It had millions of installs, but where is it now? Simply, no one really uses it unless they've got a theme or legacy theme that's bundled with it. The user base in comparison to a lot of other builders out there is minuscule. Why? Because they did some strange things. They changed their name. They had issues, whatever it was. 
they lost market share. But you can see how quick and easy that can actually happen. And I think Elementor need to take a history lesson from that and take on board some of the reasons why and take a look at what's happened and how no matter how much Visual Composer tried, they're not getting any kind of market share back anywhere near what some of the other builders are getting. There's a reason for it. Next, let's take a look at some of the reasons why people are so frustrated with Elementor and what they really need to do to address this sooner rather than later. Now, whether you've got positive, constructive, negative, whatever kind of feedback you give, you kind of feel like you're just shouting into the void. No one really listens. You might get some sympathetic or empathetic or even kind of like shot down in flames because it's your fault. But the reason I think a lot of people feel this frustration is because we do feel like we're just shouting into the void. You don't feel like your requests, your suggestions, and your feedback are actually being taken on board by the people behind Elemental. And that leads to an incredible amount of frustration. So how do we address that? Well, I think one of the first things we need to get done is to have a clear and open roadmap. So we can see what's being suggested, where it is in the development cycle to give a rough outline of when that's gonna be released. And if there's a reason why features that are in the roadmap get pushed backwards, why? Why are they being sort of handled that way? What's the reasoning behind it? Be open, clear, and upfront. You've got a Facebook group with 130,000 users. You've got an email list probably with millions of users on it. Don't just go into silence. Tell people why. Tell people what's going on. Keep them in the loop. Otherwise, you just increase that frustration and that sense of shouting into the void. So I think these are some of the things that Elementor really, really need to address sooner rather than later so they can try to claw back some of that confidence that has kind of been lost and is continuing being eroded right now with a sense of frustration that's evident out there. But as always, this is just my thought what needs to be done. Let me know in the comment section below your frustrations, whether you think Elementor is going to succeed or fail, all those kinds of things. Just let me know in the comment section. Let's get that conversation started. As always, my name is Paul C. This is WP Tuts, and until next time, take care.